Okay, you guys, we back. Um, I have no comment to what you said, Elizabeth, but um, I want to encourage the viewers to uh, comment. What what do you guys think about Elizabeth and what she said? Um, but I do have a question for you, Elizabeth. Yeah, what's that? I'd like to know what you believe the mark of the beast is. Well, we do um, scripturally. Okay, let me let me say just a couple of things <laughs> real real quick before I get to that. Um, the first thing that I want to say is that um, when we talk about these topics, so like I know at least among the Christian community, the topic of like the end times and the mark of the beast is a really hot topic. Like it is, it is yeah. it's something that brings out a lot of debate and a lot of mm. like <laughs> a lot of feelings. Yeah, and that's the good. thing is, we need is that like the thing is is that like you know it's important that we discuss these things with with a um really like we were talking about with a humble heart because these are really these are really difficult questions that I don't think we stop long enough to think about. Like we're you know it's great that we're talking about like the end times and like what this means. But like when we come at people like, you know, Oh no, no, no. Any, anybody, anybody that gets it is going to go to hell. Like that, you know, that is, um, that's, that's a belief. And, you know, and I get that and we want to make sure that people aren't going to do that. And I get the passion behind that. But, but if you're someone who's like, Oh no, no, like we won't be here. Like I am like, we won't be here. Um, and you're so adamant we're about gonna that. We're going to be here. We're going to be here. We're going to go through this horrible stuff. <laughs> Just to <laughs> let you guys know, we have a different belief on that. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, but the thing is, it's like, so, you know, but, she, but what she's, well, you know, what she's asking, like, she, I'm looking at the heart behind what she's saying. And she's like, okay, like, I get that you're she saying, who? you know, that Me? you don't think we'll be Me? here. Wait, yeah, Me? you. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, or, or anybody else, when you get into this discussion, like we, you know, when we're talking about matters of eternity, like, you know, even when we're talking about the concept of heaven and hell, the mark of the beast, like there's a lot of things that are attached to that. So for instance, I'm kind of going off of just a little bit, but like, you know, but, but, she, you know, Shelly, you were talking about like, with your belief that we will be here, there's this real thing about like, well, what's going to happen to my family? Like that's I know issue, my baby, right? like really, yeah. My daughter, like dang, like I tell her not to get the mark of the beast, you know. I'm trying to tell her, you know, there's Jesus and there's the devil, and you know, if you get this, you go to hell and you know, give her the scriptures, which I need to do again, you know, just really make sure I pound that in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> With grace. Be nice. <laughs> yeah, I need to be graceful. You're right about that. Yeah. And a gentle, loving, you know, a way that's age appropriate. And, um, like, I just want her to really know, you know, this is serious. Like, I, you know, a lot of people don't believe that the whole mark of the beast is, is true. And, you know, or maybe they, you know, I don't know, justify it. I don't know. They're blind, but... I am not blind and I believe God's word and I have the fear of the Lord in me and I do not want my daughter to get that mark the beast. I know how real that is and what that means. That means an eternity in hell with the devil where you do not sleep, you do not eat, you do not go on vacations, you do not get to go have a birthday cake. Yeah, I mean, you don't have your friends to hang out with when you're having a bad day. And you don't get to die. You get to suffer forever. Yeah. Where there's no escape. <laughs> I don't yeah. want my daughter getting that mark. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is, I mean, you know, and what I'm hearing is is really that heart. And I think I think the heart behind these conversations is completely being missed because everybody's like, you know, so like butting heads like they're not really hearing the heart of what people are saying and so like i had the experience with that um you know really you know as christians we talk a lot about hell and about how you know and, and we all have different different ideas about you know the issue of salvation and heaven and hell and the whole nine yards but the, but the thing is if there's one universal belief is that there is a hell 
and that, you know, an unbeliever is, is that's where they're going to go. And, and we're so used to just talking about that, that I'm wondering if we ever stop and, and view the heart of it. So um, for a personal instance of mine, yeah, is my, great. I had a friend, you know, and I, I had tried to share the gospel with her and I tried to talk to her and I, and, and it wasn't like pounding anything in. I was asking her like, you know, so what are your beliefs about Christianity? And she was kind of telling me, and I, and I was trying to say, well, you know, I have some, some good books I can recommend. Like I was really just trying to talk to her. Um, and she, she pretty much had made the decision. Like she just didn't want to hear it. And, um, and, you know, she unfortunately ended up passing away. And it was the first time that I had somebody, because we like to stay in our little Christian circles, right? Mm -hmm. So, Which is so unhealthy. Passes, it's so unhealthy to do that. Let me just add that. That is so unhealthy to just, just stay in our little Christian circles. <laughs> but that that's another rabbit trail. <laughs> yeah, we day. chase a lot of rabbits, let me tell you. <laughs> no, um, we do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Elizabeth, but, there's um, a rabbit. He's very shy. Hey, there was a rabbit. <laughs> right um so so yeah so um so we stay in our little christian circles and so when somebody passes like it, there's not a second thought because they were like oh well they were a believer so i know where they're at but like when we have people that we're we're almost positive that they weren't saved we come face to face with the reality of oh my gosh like oh my gosh and there's something that changes our heart now where we're more we're just we're more compassionate about the topic mm. and we start hearing people's heart more you know i guess i guess i guess i got some little issues because i was i think the holy spirit's convicting me i think when i was like i gotta pound it in i don't think that was you know probably not the right spirit but like like you said, we got to look at the heart of the things. The heart of the things is really that I know this is truth and I don't want my baby to take that dang mark. You know, I don't want to make sure she gets it. I'm not trying to brainwash her, or, you know, um, like feed some lies into her head. I mean, this is some true, real stuff. And only those who have eyes to see and ears to hear can really understand and see it and, and hear it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, I just, I just think that, you know, and I've said this for a long time, like, I think that what's really missing from the Christian community is love in our discussions, like the heart of God is love. And that doesn't mean that we're going to agree on everything. That doesn't mean that there aren't times that, you know, we're going to get really passionate about what we're saying, because like, I, so I had, I had studied about the rapture a long time ago. I was in a discussion and there was people that believe all sorts of things. They believe pre-tribulation. Um, they believe mid-tribulation. They believe post-tribulation. They believe there wasn't even going to be a rapture. Mm -hmm. And, and so I was listening to like everything they were saying and I went and I studied it out, you know, and I still came to the same conclusion about a pre-tribulation rapture but what i did what i did hear was everybody's concerns in that so for us for the pre-tribulation um our message is a message of 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 hope and it's a message of like you know of um of right saving saving from that you know from that hour and i you know and i think for a lot of pre-tribulation people that that believe pre-tribulation um, I think there's a misconception that's kind of been attached to us, which means that we're not worried about not being prepared. Like they're like, so you're not going to prepare at all, but what happens if this does happen and you're not prepared? Well, the thing that I found out even studying as a pre-tribulation believer is the Bible tells us to be ready, like be ready. <laughs> like, cause if you're not ready and it's not talking about stocking up on food, it's not talking about that. It's talking about spiritually. Like if you're not spiritually ready, you're not going anywhere, <laughs> whether it's pre, post, trip, whatever, you're not going anywhere. So I saw the message of like, of, of we need to be prepared. So I, so I don't know how that got attached to pre-tribulation people. I don't know, but I do believe that we need to be prepared and we need to think about these things because there is always a chance that we might be seeing it wrong and we need to be prepared for that possibility. For the mid-tribulation, I saw 
you know, I saw them saying, you know, um, that, yeah, we're going to have this, this, this time span and we need to be aware that we don't get the mark and then we'll be raptured out. So everybody had their, their, their heart and their point of view and, and their reason, you know, for being so adamant about their position. And I understood that, but I really think that love, like the heart of love and the compassion and the understanding and the, you know, all of that, I think that's really missing from our conversations today. Yeah, I think so too. Hey, um, let me ask you, what is your view on um, the rapture? You know, there's like, I think uh, there's post-trip, pre-trip, and mid-trip. If I'm wrong, mm -hmm. correct me. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm post-trip. I mean, I think that we're going to go through some really hard times as Christians from <laughs> from videos that I've seen on YouTube. I mean, who hasn't looked at videos for this stuff as a Christian, right? So yeah, yeah. For me, like it's the FEMA camp. I'm like, I think this is totally gonna be like they're gonna be like, get the mark, and if you don't, we're gonna throw you into FEMA camps and kill you. Eventually, they'll kill us. Maybe you know they'll feed us for a while and just make it you know get people comfortable with the idea that they're locking up Christians, and then you know the people that won't get the mark maybe get the the world to like turn against us, you know, like just hold us hostage in this FEMA camps for a while. Right. And then, um, just, uh, you know, they, they can't just kill us right away. Right. Cause like the society would be like, um, you know, this is just like, I don't know, maybe, maybe they'll just keep us for a while. And then, um, you know, eventually, they'll somehow turn the minds of the people just to kill us off i don't know this is my this is in my mind okay this sounds this is so hard to get out because i feel like this, i sound so crazy but this is good because probably other no, people have it fine. too okay we don't know what's gonna happen you know we're trying to figure it out with the scriptures it's written in, in a mystery you know it's really it's really cool but God teaches us that he teaches us to search for wisdom and understanding as, is like, um, there's a scripture, you know, about that. So, right. yeah. And, and so, um, I think that we're going to go to FEMA camps. <clears throat> we're going to get our heads cut off with guillotines. And if we don't get the mark and, um, yeah, about 144,000 and all that stuff in New Jerusalem. I don't know when that's going to happen. I am so confused. <laughs> but that's my idea of oh, a um, post-trip. <laughs> I'm a post-tripper. <laughs> For now, at least okay. in, until I get a better understanding of things. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is, I mean you know, there's, there's being confident in your beliefs, but, but always having that possibility that like, maybe you're viewing it wrong. Yeah. And so when I went, when I went into that discussion, I was like, okay, maybe I, maybe I am. And so I, I really researched it. And for me, when I researched it at the most, I could understand why people were, were mid trip. I didn't really see any evidence for post-trip. I definitely saw evidence for the mid-trip belief, but I still came out of it um, pre-trip because there were just some things in the Bible that I was like, well, this doesn't quite make sense if, if you know, it doesn't make sense unless we're talking about a post-trip rapture. And I have like, I have a whole, um, I have a whole, um, like thing on that, that I actually need to make a video on my YouTube channel for. So I, I, I it's a lot to get into here. But what I will say is, um, as far as like pre-trip, this is my basic belief, is that, um, is that um, as far as some of the things that are going to happen, I do think we're seeing some of that now. Um, like you were talking about the preparation for killing Christians. And the climate right now is so hostile toward Christians. And I mean, Christians in other countries are, are being killed, you know, yeah. it just hasn't quite hit here in the US. And so, but the, but the, the climate is extremely hostile right now toward, toward, toward Christians. And so I think that preparation is already happening to, to cultivate that, you know, that thing that Christians are just really intolerant and the world would be better off without, without Christianity. And if we can't eradicate, 
eradicate Christianity, then we need to get rid of the Christians, you know. Um, I think that's already kind of being cultivated in this climate that we see, the political climate. Um, so I think that we might see some of the things, um, but but from reading scripture, um, there's going to be a very, uh, there's a very, um, there's a very distinct um, way that things are going to happen at the point of the great tribulation. And from what I've read in the Bible, there is, and this, this is based off of the, um, the 70 weeks of Daniel. So this ties in with Daniel and uh, we call it the last of the sevens. And so there's going to be three and a half years when the Antichrist reigns, there's going to be three and a half years of peace, absolute peace. And at um, and, and that point, like you're talking about, like we're going to have people being the mark, um, Christians will be killed because they are posing a threat to this utopian society. Um, and so for three and a half years, um, you're going to have everything peachy keen. And then the last three and a half years, literally all hell is going to break loose mm -hmm. because that is when Satan enters, um, uh, enters the Antichrist. And when the judge, uh, well, okay. I might not be correct on that part, but the last three and a half years is really where the judgment of, of, of God comes down, where we see all of the different, you know, all the different plagues, all the bolts of wrath, like all of that happens in the last three and a half years, as far as what I've understood from scripture. So that's how I think things are going to go. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. <laughs> I would love to know who's, per, per, what do you guys think? What do you think they should comment down below, Elizabeth? Well, I mean, just weighing in on the discussion, you know, but the one thing that I will say, and this is on, I'm sure behalf of myself and Shelly, is if you comment, um, please, like, please be respectful mm -hmm. to each other. Yeah. Because that's really what we're trying to cultivate. Yeah. We're trying to cultivate, like, dialogue that is loving, even if we disagree on things that we're passionate about. I mean, you know, Shelly and I have had this discussion many, many times and there's been some, like some tensions that flare up like, no, no, like that's not right. And I'm like, no, no, that's not right. And, but we've always remained respectful to each other. So we know that like things might get a little bit heated, but we just ask that you remember to try and be loving toward another, not calling each other names, you know, like just, yeah. just be nice. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that goes along with that scripture, which I don't, you know, I'm not one of those Christians that can be like, Hey, Mark 629. <laughs> but, but you know, that scripture, it says, let your words build each other up and not tear each other down. I mean, even if you're not Christian, that's a really good standard that we all just inherently know to follow. You know, why would you let, why would you let your words tear people down? It doesn't do any good. It just hurts people, you know? Who wants to do that? We're all about love, right? Even people who don't know Jesus are about love. So I just want to encourage you just, you guys, just like you know, me and Elizabeth, we want to encourage you guys to leave co loving comments down below. And if you're going to be wicked and evil, <laughs> we will delete it because, um, I may not be really great with the comments, but Elizabeth is, and she's a moderator on my channel now, so we will be deleting those comments. <laughs> if I miss them, Elizabeth will get them. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm more along the lines of like a commenter rather than a mediator. Like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, okay. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, like, yeah, this is something we can kind of talk yeah, about. Yeah, we'll work it but, out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like volunteering you <laughs> on in public. Like, hey, is this we're gonna do? No, I'm glad you said no because I shouldn't have done that. I should have asked you. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, for me and and you know, um, it, this is kind of where we talk about how like you know we all think we are we're all different people. We think different ways, mm. and um, for me. Um, you and and you know if you guys ever wanted to go to my channel to test this, yes. you're more than welcome to. But I I foster discussion, and so like you know so for me, um, like I don't I don't delete like I don't delete comments. I just I don't do that. But like I will speak out and be like, look like if you, like for instance if you're a Christian, and you know and you're telling you know you're telling people in my comment section that you're, you're going to go to hell if you don't believe the way I do, 
like, first of all, I'm going to challenge you. I'm like, okay, like love, like love. <laughs> you will know them by their love. And that doesn't mean that we can't, we can't defend our position. It doesn't mean that, but everything should be done in love. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it as if doing it unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you'd be going, you know, doing all that. You know what I mean? Like, because, um, because if there's one thing that we learned from Jesus is, um, again, rabbit trails. But if there's one thing that we I learned know. from Jesus. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, though. We're good. Yeah, it was it was how he talked to people. And um, Shelly and I were talking about this, I believe, yesterday, about how, you know, how Jesus talked to people. We do have instances, right, where he, he turned over the money changer table and where he called the Pharisees a brood of vipers, you know, and things like that. But but if you think about that, like, like he was being stern with the hypocrites, right? The people that were saying one thing and doing another thing, um, the people that were passing judgment on everybody else and, um, and not really looking at their own hearts and their own issues. But when he was dealing with sinners, he was not like that. He was very compassionate and loving, like, you know, and. Um, he would tell them, yeah, like, you know, this is what the word says, you know, and they, some, you know, and so I don't know, like, yeah. I just think, yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. It's I okay. I tend to just ramble. Yeah, me too. Sometimes, you know, we all do, don't we all like, I mean, really we do. How many people are like humble or, you know, can put away their pride enough to actually put it on a public YouTube video like we are right now, you know? Uh, most people, you know, wouldn't do that because <laughs> they're humiliated, but, you know, it's cool. We're just ramblers, but we'll <laughs> ramble our way right back into normal. Huh? Say that again. Oh, yeah. It's so much more comfortable than the other one. You just got to like anything that's on there that you don't want on there. Just put it like on the coffee table. Okay. Um, so yeah, so after we, we went through a million different rabbit trails, I'm going back to the question that you originally asked me, which was, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yo. we got back on track. Thank you, Jesus. Which was, um, what do I think, um, the, uh, the mark of the beast is. And there's one thing that I want to say about that is I think we have to be really careful about, um, about using the words, what do you think? Simply because like we have to, we have everything we say has to be biblical. So we can't just be like, oh, like I, you know, I think it means this and never really check it out with the word. Oh, that's because a good everything point. Needs to work that's together. true. That's true. Very true. Right. Very true. Uh, oops, so, excuse me. <laughs> that's so what I will say is based on, based on what I have read from the Bible, we do know that the that there is going to be a mark um, that is six six six, which is the mark of the beast. We do know that from scripture, our revelation. You think it's physical, or you think it's a tattoo? Um, well, and that that's kind of what I was saying earlier is that I think um, I think the mark of the the actual mark of the beast, like the part that is going to be the the final seal deal, mm -hmm. I think that is going to actually be the tattoo. And the reason that I say that is because we are, we already have the implants happening now. Like we, the implants are already being implanted. And so like they're, they're introducing us to the idea of it right now. Like that's what this Wait. whole thing is. Wait, oh. so they're, they're introducing us to the idea of putting a mark because they're putting the microchip in people, which I think is the mark of the beast. But mm -hmm. like, so you're thinking that like, it's just another step, just like kind of like the credit card is right. We're slowly getting you used to the idea. Um, yes and no. And the reason that I say that is because, um, and, and this is like, I, I, I hope that I'm, I hope that I'm being clear about what I'm trying to say is like, okay, so based, let me go back to what scripture says. So based on scripture, we do know that the mark of the beast is going to be that there is an implant that is, you know, um, either on the hand or on the forehead that is the size of a grain of rice. We do know that from scripture. What? It does not and say we, grain of rice in the scripture? 
Uh, I believe it. I believe it does. It doesn't. Um, no. If somebody, if somebody, um, I'll, I'll see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, it would be um, great. But if we somebody should, has the scripture it. reference, if you could post it below, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be um, so good. But yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that it does say. Um, man, I wish. I wish we could just like. Oh, wait, you know what? Huh. I think. I think I might, hold on. I think I might be able to Google it real quick on okay. my end. Yeah, Google see. it. You know what? We're going to have moments like this during discussion where we just have to do that. And it's just, you know, so what? Like, you just got to be patient. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no well, stress. It's, no stress. It's, it's good because this is what we want to do. We don't want to just go off of our own ideas. We want to make sure that what we're saying yeah. is scriptural. Yeah, yeah. Um, so actually we just had this issue earlier tonight. I was, um, I, we were talking about something and I had, I had said, I had said a scripture and I ended up slapping two different scriptures together and calling it one scripture. And I yeah. had, and the only reason I found oh, out is because I had to go back and check. Yeah. Um, your scripture sandwich. You called it a it's... scripture sandwich. <laughs> that was so funny. That's what it was too. Can you describe it again, what the scripture sandwich was? It's basically taking two completely different scriptures and putting them together as, as one scripture. So, for instance, like um, uh, the scripture that I was thinking of was uh, was in 1 Corinthians. And um, and the other the other scripture that I thought was part, because I thought the whole thing was the scripture from 1 Corinthians. But it turned out I had actually slapped part of first Corinthians and something clear in Genesis together and thought it was one scripture. And so, and that can happen sometimes, especially if we're not read up, like we have all the, yeah. all this information that can get crisscrossed. And that's why it's very important for us to, to always look, look up to make sure we're correct. Yeah. Um, that's okay. True. So let me see. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just doing a little painting y'all. Why Elizabeth looks that up <laughs> here. I'll turn I'll, I will entertain y'all. Entertain y'all. Yeah. Cause I know you're probably like bored. Like who wants to just like look at us just looking down. Right. Okay. Here, here's some entertainment. I'm going to paint. <laughs> I'm just being weird. Okay. I should edit this out. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to edit it. I'm just going to I'm just gonna be weird okay. and you know, ain't we all? Okay, wait, are you ready me, now? I'm not sure. Let me look this up and see um if this is the correct saying. Wait, I'm I can I can tell them me. about painting. Some people like my yes. arts. Yes, talk to them about painting while I get myself put together. That's <laughs> a great idea. This is perfect. Okay. <laughs> you guys should paint this, it's so cool. So you you get the um like the pink and put like a white in the middle and you just swirl it around. It's so easy and it looks so three dimensional. And then like you draw like you know like a little branch here. The branches are really easy. And then like you for the birds you do like round bottom that's bigger than the top and then do a little small. It's like making a it's making a s snowman. That's kind of like their body. And then you add the little feathers at the bottom and they look like birds. And then like I have, um, I had made my own stencils. I actually made my own stencils because I could laminate things. So I, I printed, I found this and I put it on Adobe and I sized it right. And then I printed it and put it in a, a laminating package thingy and laminated it and then bent it and cut it and cut it on the inside and, and then uh put it against here and just that's how i got that you ready uh not yet okay. i i was reading um okay i'm still trying to find it so take your time second. take your i'm time. not that familiar with revelation so i'm having a moment yeah that's okay so have your moment and i'll have mine <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay, they're just gonna have to have some moments where they're bored for a moment, but like, um, it's okay, we can always edit it. Like, um, I don't know, we'll figure it out, it's fine. <clears throat> Hang on, it's so therapeutic to paint, you guys. I want to encourage you guys in your act art artisticness that Jesus gave you guys if you're Christians with your gifts. 
even if you're not, encourage you guys to paint because it is some therapeutic stuff to do because we live in a very hard world that is so challenging and gives us lots of lovely anxiety. <laughs> so this stuff really, really, really helps, man. It really does. So mm. I'm trying to make it like look 3D. So I'm putting like a dark shade of brown and then a light shade of brown and then a little white to look like that center is just like beaming on the edges of the branch with the white with my other paintbrush. Oh my gosh. What? What happened? We don't even we don't even have to we don't even have to. Like um I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you no, no. what you were saying. I'm sorry. No 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 oops <laughs> you're good. No what no what did you find? What happened? Okay so um I will say that I I don't know where we got the idea that it is a grain of rice because as of right now, I'm not seeing it. That doesn't mean it's not there. I just may not be looking in the right place. But that actually does not matter because in Revelation 13, 16 through 17, now this is this is on um, this is according to the ESV version. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it would say. Um, you know, let me look at the my Bible because I have NASB. So let me see if it says the same thing. But the ESV version says which would make complete sense, um, which, I mean, it would just make complete sense. Um, uh, okay, sorry. That's okay, take your time, no anxiety. They're just gonna, you know, we're not like little entertainment birds here. This isn't like a regular YouTube channel of the world. <laughs> we're Christians, we're, G we're just trying to be led by the Holy Spirit and with truth, you know? It looks different than somebody who's just trying to entertain people. Okay. All right. So according to ESV, Revelation 13, 16 through 17 says, um, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, mm -hmm. both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one may buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is, listen to this, that is, okay, unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast or the number of its name. So remember what I was saying? I think that the mark is actually the tattoo. And I, yeah. I think that was correct. Oh my gosh, you can see why you say that now. Hang on, let me get my Bible. Hang on, I need to look this up too. Sure. Okay. Um, the one thing that I will say um, ah! during this is that um, we also look at, okay, so we know also according to Revelation that, um, uh, um, let me see. Keep going. Um, Keep going. Keep talking. Okay. There, I may not Revelation. be here, but they are. <laughs> okay. Hang on. I'm going to okay. get my Bible, but I'm listening. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, so, okay. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm also reading from Revelation 20 verse 4 ESV. Okay. Now, when we when we're reading about this, think about think about the mark being a tattoo, right? And so, essentially, Satan is marking his people with a tattoo, right? Whoever gets his name or the number mm, of his name, right? No, but I can kind of see why I don't totally entertain that idea yet. But like, I can see where you're coming from. I just gotta look it up and really get the revelation for myself before I can believe that. But okay, okay. So, uh, so just for a moment, like, uh, let's entertain that idea. Like we were, we were talking about, I'll entertain the idea of us being here for it. Entertain the idea that that's the case. And now I'm going to read Revelation 24, uh, 20 verse four. Okay, wait, wait, then wait, I, wait, before you continue. So you want me to just assume for a minute that the mark of the beast is the tattoo? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so, re so reading Revelation 20 verse four. Then I saw thrones and seated them or seated on them were those whom the authority Ooh, to judge was committed. Also, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God and those who had not worshiped the beast or its image 
had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Um, there is, um, you know, that was actually the wrong scripture. Um, but that, but that's there a is good a scripture. There but is a scripture. There is a scripture that talks about how we like how um, how uh, Jesus uh, tattoos his name on us. So when you're looking at like this, like, this concept of a tattoo, right? And I again, I'm gonna have to find that scripture. There's a scripture that talks about Jesus, you know, tattoos are our, our name on us, right? And so it's marking that we're his, just like the Antichrist is marking who's his, both yeah. of them with a tattoo. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I'm sorry, you were trying to get your thoughts together and I think no, 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 you're good. You're right. No, I'm you're good. You're good, Elizabeth. So wait, okay. So how does God mark us? How do you think God marks us? Um, well, um I know again, it's in the I, Bible. That's in the Bible, huh? I know it yeah. is. I just don't remember where it's at. Maybe it's like a not a physical mark. It's going to be like a spiritual mark. Well, Maybe you have to remember we're going to be fleshly bodies. Do you think it's a physical thing? I don't think it's a physical mark that God's going to give us. Maybe we can Google it. Maybe I can Google it. Wait, wait, wait. No, wait. I'm getting off on a rabbit, rabbit trail. I was going to go back to that scripture about um the tattoo you think that it's that tattoo that's um the mark so i really want to uh before i really buy into that idea i just want to really you know um get it for myself what scripture was that um it was revelation chapter 13 verse 16 through 17 16 through 17 okay thanks okay yeah i love that scripture and he calls it i need to i need to highlight this where's my highlighter <laughs> I do. <laughs> We're gonna be needing to share this with people. I do. I need to find it. Okay. We're already sharing with people. We're on YouTube. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That no. was a joke. <laughs> it's funny. It's a funny joke. <laughs> it's true. I mean, like, but more, you know, like the people around us. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. You're funny. Oh, I love you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Love you too. Mm. And he caused it all, both small and great, and rich and poor, and free and bond, <laughs> to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of names. I love how there's different translations, it helps us understand it better. Um, not that his word, you know, changes like it is truth, but that's a whole another topic. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. The number is six, six, is hundred and three scores or in six, six. Okay, I still don't, I don't, okay, so I have no idea where you get that it's a tattoo then because... Um, the way that you read it earlier is so different than what this one says. I mean, it doesn't sound the same at all. Can you read your verse yeah. again? Yeah, well, the, the version that I that I had actually initially read was from the ESV. My my Bible says something it says something very similar to yours. Um, actually, I think it almost says it exactly. Um, Revelation. Let me get back to it. Revelation thirteen. 17 or 16 through 17. Um, so this is what my Bible says. Now, my Bible is the NASB. Yours is the KJV, right? Yeah, good point. Yeah, okay. it's the KJV. Y'all. Okay. KJV. So this is what mine says. And he causes all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name the name of the beast or the number of his name. So, so if we think about that for a minute, if um, mm -hmm. if that if that is the mark, his name or his number, how would you put mm -hmm. that on somebody? Oh, wow. 
maybe wait no but it's not physical it's you think it's physical i don't think it's physical i think it's um you know like you know like the um you know this the worldly singers that work for satan that pump out all this garbage about the flesh and hoes and sex and all that crap well um they often do this like 666 symbol and you see it like in the uh you know satanic industry you know the disneyland and all that stuff like that's all of satan and um you often see the six six you know in their logos and you know um kind of their albums so i think that 666 represents um the satanic system of things um well i think like i think that i mean I, I don't think you're completely off on that. Like, we, we know everything is spiritual about this, right? We know everything is spiritual. But, like, we have to, like, remember we talk about keeping things in context. So, so it's saying that, that if, if, you're not, if you don't have the mark on your hand or on your forehead, so it means it is physical, whatever this mark is. And then it tells us what the mark is. The mark is the name of the beast or the number of his name. No, it so says it's gotta be or. physical. No, it says, or they're two separate things. There's the mark or the name of the beast. Actually, it's three things. It's either the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Can you read that verse in your script, in your book again? Yeah, um, I'll read, I'll read verse 17 because that's, that's what you're, you're going on. Yeah. Um, and, and he, uh, and he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark. Mine says either the name of the beast or the number of his name. So what, it, how does yours put it? Cause that might be where we're getting derailed. It's just that little, that little piece of language. How does yours say? Uh, mine says, and that no man might buy or sell save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Oh, really? Hmm. What does yours say again? Uh, mine says, and he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except for the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. And so, so the way that mine is reading is, the mark is either going to be oh, like you're either going to yeah. have his name or you're going to have his number. That's the mark. Wow. But yours is saying it's or, or, or. Yeah, so that's very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It's going to be interesting. This is, <laughs> we need to pray for revolution. Sorry. And this is, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you do this all the time. <laughs> you can you go first <laughs> i was just gonna say that um and this is why this is why it's really important for us as christians to come together and to discuss this instead of being like no 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 you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong because we have these little subtleties mm, you know what i mean point. that that play a part in like how we're understanding things and it's good to talk about these things and what i wanted to just add really quickly is so I was talking about my idea that it is an actual like it is an actual tattoo because of the name or the number and I was talking about how it ties in with the scripture that talks about you know being um you know having you know um God you know we're tattooed by God and so it makes sense that there's a there's a mark there's a physical mark for people that are Satan's and a physical mark for people that are are God's mm -hmm. um and so that's kind of where I come from on that. You know what I mean? It makes sense to me. Um, but it's always good to keep discussing these things. Yeah. But I think the most important thing, whatever you are, whether you're pre, mid, post, the main thing is make sure that you are ready. Like, be ready. Yeah, for, what, for anything. Rep, be ready for the worst. Rep, for sure. Oh, spiritually. Yeah, spiritually. I was thinking physically for a minute. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a I little mean, bit carnally minded right now. Just a little bit. Just need to get my Bible a little bit more. It'll just really help. Flush out that stuff. I mean, <laughs> we see it all. We see it all throughout scripture, all throughout scripture in the parables. Like, you know, a, a, a master leaves his house and, you know, and comes back and, you know, and, and things aren't ready. The parable of the virgins, you know, they weren't ready, you know, and so they were left out, you know, they're like, the Bible is very clear, like, be ready. So what, whatever side you are on this, it's great to discuss it for edification and to, you know, try and get understanding. But the biggest, biggest thing is we need to spiritually be ready. And yeah. really what that means is making sure that you have that relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. That that's, that's really the main thing. Now yeah. we, you know, we can talk about walking it out, you know, at a, you know, at a later time, but, but that's really what it means to be ready is to like, you know, you need to be his, <laughs> you need to have that relationship. And you can't write off the coattails of your parents. You can't write off the coattails of church. You can't even write off the coattails of what what people have told you. Yeah, about so it's God pastors, especially pastors. A lot of wolves <laughs> in sheep's clothing. Yeah, there's a lot. So I'm sorry. No, now no, I, no, I, no, no, I, no. You're good. That's just that's just the enemy coming in with doubt. You know, his same mo. You did good. You're you're like we're doing great. God is really good. I think this conversation is going to really edify a lot of people. And Lord, thank you for this, God. In Jesus' name. Hey, um, you know, I don't have the answers to everything. And about this whole mark of the beast, I really um, realized from this conversation, there's just, I've, I've learned a lot. Like, it is, it really is those little belief systems. Like, when you really, you have to really, like, you know... I I need to get in the Bible more and I need to be like, I, I would like, like, okay, I don't have the answer. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, it's really, it's got me thinking. So I'm going to get into prayer and I think we should all do that, you know? And, um, whenever we like, cause it's not just, there's so many things about the Bible that people have so many different beliefs on and so many little things, even as Christians and believers, you know, we just have these little, you know, schism, schisms, unfortunately, in the body. And, um, but you know, the great thing is there's that great scripture that says, if this too, he will make known unto you. I don't know what scripture it is, but it's your mm -hmm. scripture. Can you quote it real quick? Yeah. Um, and I feel horrible because I don't even remember where it's found now, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, it the scripture basically says, if at any point you disagree, this too will he make known to you. Up until then, let us live up to what we have already attained. Yeah, and which is a really good scripture to meditate on. It you can Google it and find out what scripture it is. And yeah, and it's so true. He really does. You know, um, if you really have the heart for truth, he will uh, reveal things. You know, he does. He reveals truths to us in his own timing and, in, and not in ours. And he confirms within us the truth. And, and it's so amazing because, like, we would really be tossed to and fro like a wind if it wasn't for his Holy Spirit. I have learned that I would be absolutely deceived was it not for him giving me eyes to see and ears to hear. He has showed me that. It has really um, helped reduce my pride because once I got the idea that my perspective can be off about things and that I could, I, I could be possibly seeing things wrong, it just made me um, more humble and more open to uh, learning and I think I'm going off into a rabbit trail. I think we should probably. That's okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks. I think we're I think we're at the wrapping it up stage. So yeah, you, I think you so go too. whatever rabbit trail you need to go down. <laughs> okay, you're sweet. I bet I'll look back on the video. I'll be like, I just thought in my head that I was so dang messed up in the rabbit trails, but really it did make sense. It's just mm -hmm. that doubt that the enemy puts in our mind. Yeah. but yeah like we could just you know take it to prayer and ask God to reveal the truth to us and he does and he's so good you know and I think the more that we really soak in his word then it 
It really comes together better. It really is just like putting a puzzle together, right? You're not going to see the bigger picture until you start putting the pieces together. And you can't start putting the pieces together unless you're really in his word like we're supposed to be. Because he says, don't live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of his mouth, which I don't do all the time. I usually eat the bread that comes in my, goes in my stomach. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I need to eat some more of this bread. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to read Revelation and I'm going to you know, read a couple chapters and just meditate on these two chapters. And then like, you know, maybe like, you know, you just like, really, if you really get in the, I think if I would just dedicate myself every day and really just like have a small attainable goal that does not feel overwhelming, that if I did that regularly, that the Holy Spirit would begin to work in such a way. And I think he would begin to lead me, um, into what book to take and I think I think the more I do that the more he'll just start revealing a lot of truth to me yeah yeah well and you know the thing is too is you know um you know we talk about um you're reading the bible and wanting to get something out of it which is is awesome but we also have to think too that when we're when we're taking the word in, even if we may not be getting anything out of it, it's you know it's it's always working in one way or another. It's either working to protect us against false doctrine. It's working in a specific situation. Mm, yeah. It's you know it's learning. It's growing. Like it's there's so much that happens when we read, and I need to remind myself of that too because I'm with you, girl. I'm like sitting here like, um, yeah, so mm -hmm. what, what, what was that scripture? Because I don't, I don't even know what book it's in. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did a scripture sandwich. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, and it's good. Like, it's good that we challenge each other to ask, where in the Bible are you finding that? Because it, it helps guard against our own ideas coming in there and, want, and messing everything up you know, scriptural, scripture wise, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and so it's, it's always good to say like chapter and verse, like, and you're not trying to be facetious. You're not trying to be rude. You're, you're honestly, it's like making sure that what oh, they're yeah, saying is true. even biblical. Yeah, no, no, with. it does help to know that, you know, scripture and verse, it does help. It's a good thing to know that. I wish I did, but I don't, you know, I, you know, but okay. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Thank, thank God for Google. And I mean that yeah. seriously, because <laughs> if you're ever like, I mean, we did it tonight. You're like, uh, where is that? And I'm like, uh, it's up in Revelation, I think. And then I had to Google it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Google is awesome. That's what I do all the time. I get like a tidbit of the verse and I Google it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we really hope, like, we really hope you guys are encouraged and, um, the one thing I want to say, at least to you, Shelly, because I don't know if it's happening to you, but it's happened to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so long. Nobody's going to watch it. But I know, me too. People watch, people watch movies that are two, three hours long. So if they really want the word of God, they will watch. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that's right. But, and, and hey, if only one person watches, but they're like, they're watching, if they're watching this long, they are really, you know, thirsty for God god's word which is amazing and so you know even if god plants one seed in them of truth from this video and teaches them one thing from his holy spirit not because of us but because of his holy spirit then yeah. that's that's amazing and that's powerful and that's worth it yeah yeah, yeah. so we just want to encourage you guys you know um even if you don't you know, even if you don't comment, like hopefully, you know, it, it helps guide you in being able to talk with other people or talk amongst yourselves or, you know, we just want you guys to be encouraged and yeah. we hope that these are really helping. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I hope it, I know it, I know it will. God's good. I know it will. Um, God's good. I, I had something to say. I had it on my head, but I lost it. You know, next time I'm going to have my notebook because that happens so many times. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And, the, you know, so I'm like, I'm going to write it down. I'm going to write it down. Then I can let it go and really be focused, you know, not holding on to that thing in my head. 
Mm, I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. No, that was so good. So much good stuff came out of you, Elizabeth. Thanks for doing this with me. Like, yeah, and I, I love the questions that you ask too. Hmm, thank you. I, I think this is from God. I really do. I think that this is um his ministry, a little, you know, ministry for us to do together in these last days that will really help people. There's a lot of truth that he's put in us, you know, and we're not like, we don't know everything. Um, definitely not. There's so much we're going to learn, but you know, we get to learn and grow together and we get to do it in front of you guys and you learn, you know, and see what it means to do it in such a way that it's just so respectful and loving. And that's, you know, what, that's the heart of Jesus. And that's what he wants us to do. And um, not, not like the world where you just, you know, you're trying to attack each other and tear each other down and prove that you're right. You know, it's not about that. It's, it's really about the heart. It's about love. Well said. Yeah. This video has Jesus written all over it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I can't wait, like, I just, I can't wait to do more of these. Like, I, I love it. I just, I love the fellowship. I love just, you know, and I love being able to share this with people because, you know, you and I talk a lot about how, you know, the things that he's given to me and the things that he's given to you and the discussions we have, you know, are definitely edifying, you know, each other. But like for people that have a heart for other people, like, why wouldn't we just want to share that with people? You know what yeah. I mean? And I love it. I'm just Me super too. excited. Yeah. Just pops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you comment down below and subscribe wherever that is. I don't know. <laughs> down below. Oh, and click that bell. Ring, ring that bell that bell because then ring a ding ding then you'll get um you'll get the notifications um on whenever uh the videos are posted and you guys have to check out elizabeth's channel hopefully no you don't have to <laughs> no, please 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 don't please no. i'm only saying that because like I, I only have like three videos up and I have a whole bunch of ideas. I am just having a very hard time making my own videos. But I appreciate the encouragement, Shelly. Wait, you don't want me to tell them about your video? You don't want me to tell them about your channel? Uh, oh no, no. I was I was trying to be funny, but oh, I, 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 missed like, I was saying thank you for the encouragement, but I literally only have like three videos on my channel right now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's only a little bit, there, but they're good. Like, you have no idea how much your video about sin helped me. That really stuck in my head. You have no idea how many times the Holy Spirit brings that to my memory. I actually need to watch it because for some reason it keeps playing in my head. I think the Lord's trying to get me to go back and learn something from it. Wow. Okay. yeah i need to go watch it again you have no idea the power of you know the holy spirit and the videos we do it's like good i just want to encourage you i know you know i'm sorry i think i said that wrong I, that was so wrong sorry like you do know i i know okay i'm gonna we should, we should just stop the video now <laughs> bye guys bye, bye. <laughs>